Hello, welcome back to my workshop. Today we're going to be looking at my new digital microscope. It's the Andon Star ADSM 301 with a 5 inch screen. This is not a review, I have not been paid to say anything, it's my own opinions and I purchased this with my own money. I do have another scope so we can do a comparison, it is still for sale and it's like a quarter of the price. So I thought that would be interesting and then my friend Lee, more from making it, who you should all be subscribed to by the way. He's got a bigger one, but he doesn't like to brag about it. So we can compare what that bit of extra money actually gets you. If we look at the specs of my model, it has a five inch screen. We have a focus range of five centimeters to 15 centimeters. We can output to the built-in screen. We can output via HDMI. We can record to SD cards and it has an AV output, but he didn't provide us with a lead for the AV output. The last option is to plug into the PC via USB. I haven't tested the software and I haven't tested the capture. I have used it on the TV. But for the scope of this video, <laughs> we will just be looking at the screen and recording to SD. So it comes packaged in this nice box. We do have foam inserts cut and it's pre-assembled. Inside the box we have a 5 volt 2 amp power supply. There is a USB lead with a right angle connector, a remote control that I've already made a mess of uh, with some degreaser, HDMI to micro HDMI to connecting up to your television or your capture device, and then this lead which has USB and a jack for connecting up for the lamps, and it includes a power switch and dimmer options. Setup is very easy. So it, it literally is assembled in the box itself. On the back is the jack for the lamps. AV out, but we didn't get a lead for that. A slot for the micro SD card, USB and HDMI out. So if we plug in the USB lead, like I say, they have these right angled connectors on them. So they're not sticking up plug in the lead for the lamps. I'm going to plug this in to the USB power that I've already got here. So as you'll see as soon as you plug it in, it automatically turns on. And we can turn it off with the remote. Turn it back on again. The lamps have a dimmer function, so you can turn them up and down. It's very nice and easy to use. The lamps do have flexible arms, so we can adjust them, get the brightness as close as possible. But then I found that it was hard to actually do work under there, so you might you can bring them back out and just center the, the light point underneath to give you a little bit more room. The stand has height adjustments on either side that is fixed to the focal range of this camera. So 15 centimeters down to five centimeters. There's a locking adjustment on the back and then we just turn the wheels and it raises and lowers the camera. On the left and the right of the screen, we can adjust the focus. On other models, you adjust the focus by turning the, this part or this adjuster on here. Mine is on the side. The controls along the front is power, mode, up and down, OK and camera. And then we also have an adjustment for the lights that are built in to the actual camera just here. You don't really notice those when the arms are in the way. But you can see that it does have lights there. Now we've heard all the details. I've got my old scope. This one's labeled as DigiLife, but it's exactly the same as the one that I showed you before that's currently on sale. And then this is the Undone Star. I'm going to use EPROMs as the first example and we'll compare zooming in. We can swap them over so that we can get a, a fair comparison. We'll have a look at the screens using the camera and we'll also record it to the internal SD cards so that you can see the video quality as well. So this is the Andon Star. 
I'm currently at the top of the physical height and we're focused in. I'm going to record this and then we'll move down. And then bring in our focus. What I found is that you can't use the macro, like the digital zoom, while it's recording. So I'm just going to pause that. And then we can use the digital zoom. So I've zoomed in by two. We're now zoomed in by four. I'm just going to tweak the focus now that we're all the way in. And if you look close enough, you'll see the logo there for this video's sponsor, PCB Way. I'm sure you've all seen that PCB Way can make your printed circuit boards to a very high standard and ship within days. But the number of speciality services they also offer is just crazy. Look at the production capabilities. Advanced PCBs, Prototype PCBs, Aluminum PCBs, Rigid Flex, Metacore, Flexible, High Frequency, High TG, Thick Copper, HDI, LED, Quick Turnaround, Prototyping, Low Volume, Assembly, SMT, BGA. The list just goes on and on. But wait, there's more. They now do 3D printing. Ah, but I'm sure you're all saying, but I can 3D print at home. We're talking about machines at an industrial level, printing in materials that we can only dream of. They also do CNC machining, three and five access. For example, I recommend you go and look at the recent Maker's Muse video where he has parts ordered from them for his combat robot. Wow, I got really excited and carried away. Don't delay. Order your prototype or production printed circuit boards from PCB Way today. Okay, uh, so a bit of fun there with the sponsored segment. But if we go back to looking at our EEPROM, so with, this is as close as this one will get. And we can see quite a lot of detail on there, but it's nice and crisp. It looks okay. So this is a close up shot of the screen. I've got it focused in so we can actually see what you would see by looking at it. And this is the picture on maximum zoom in. So four times digital. So now if we take that same EEPROM and put it in the DigiLife and do the same thing, we can get a fair comparison. So you'll notice with the DigiLife that there are no extra lamps. It does have lights inside there, but I've found that it just makes it difficult to see stuff. So I'm recording on the DigiLife. You can see what it looks like with the text. But then when we move down to the window, the light just glares on it. You can't really see what's going on. So now if we move all the way down and adjust our focus, just like we did with the Undone Star. And this one has a lot bigger range of movement. And then we'll try and get that focused in. So that's the focus all the way down. I'll bring it back up. Okay, so that's as close as we can get on there. We can now use the digital zoom in. So it only has three levels of digital zoom in. This is a close up of the DigiLife screen. Again, maximum zoom. It didn't record at maximum zoom. As soon as you change that, it drops. It does not record the digital zoom on the DigiLife. So this is the screen and it's very difficult to make it out. It's very fuzzy, lots of noise in the background. It generally just doesn't look very good.
if we go back to the, the normal view. And you, you can see that not having those adjustable lights really spoils the picture. We could shine these lights over. And I've just I found that it just doesn't handle the, the light and the exposure anywhere near as well. So for my eyes, the quality of the picture on the Andon Star is just a lot, it's so much better. And the way that it handles the lighting and the exposure is also a win. Now I've got an example of doing some actual work with both of them. I'm making the same board that I make for my Neo Geo stuff. And we're basically placing some components. On the right, you can see how clear the chip is. And you can see the solder balls. You can actually see the balls of solder in the paste. On the left, it looks like we've got smudgy concrete on the circuit board. I haven't quite got the chip on yet. Okay, so here comes the chip. And just look at the difference in the picture of the chip. It's kind of like a brown, uh, beigey colour, whereas the, the Andon star on the right is black. And like I say, we can see the actual balls in the solder. So I'm just getting this lined up. We're going to reflow these later on. And I'm just taking my time. They generally pull themselves into the right spot. So now we're putting a 10k resistor on. And again, we've got solder paste with individual balls on the right, brown goop on the left. Here I'm putting on a capacitor uh, with my wobbly hands, and you can see the actual color of the capacitor on the right. We've got a nice color grade. Here we've got the regulator, and just lining that up. Now we're putting on some LEDs, uh, these are surface mount, and we have to make sure that they face uh, in the right direction, otherwise they don't work. So on the right hand side, you've got a nice egg yolk coloured LED centre. On the left hand side, it's very difficult to make out. It's kind of like a washed out whitey yellow kind of colour. You really can't tell. But the Andon Star has a nice crisp colour. You can really see what's going on there. Whereas on the left, all you can see is my shaky hand. So the difference between the two, I think this video really makes it stand out. You can really see the difference in the colors. So now the boards have been reflowed. And as you might have saw in the previous part, I always tend to put too much solder on. We have to go over the legs on the Arduino Mega and apply some flux and just basically clean up those legs, a little bit of drag soldering, and then we'll use some solder braid just to take off what's left. Using my JBC tip that's got the little divot in the end, and that tends to keep like the solder in it. So it, it removes the excess solder. And I'm using Chip Quick BGA rework flux. So now I'm just going to drag the solder across. The flux will help that move nicely. And I normally get left with an excess of solder at the end. And we'll use the solder braid to just wick that excess solder away. So you can see the legs are a lot clearer on the right side compared to the left. It doesn't look as bad as it did before with the horrible brownie pasty solder paste. So I do that for all four corners and then give the board an inspection. So as you could probably tell, I'm very happy with the picture quality on the screen but also the quality of the recordings that I'm getting. That was one of my big issues with the, the cheaper one. The picture quality was just not good enough for use in videos. So we've looked at the difference between the original microscript that I had and the new one, the ADSM 301. I've got the details of the old one here. It says 4.3 inch digital microscope, allowing you to see observations in detail and providing you a view of 1080p, 720p VGA resolution. Now it doesn't really tell you what is viewed at 1080p. 
So I can show you on the screen now the details of the actual codec from the file that's recorded. And the video is definitely 720p. It's not 1080. So it's possible that the pictures that's recorded are 1080p. If you look on the Amazon page for the ADSM 301, it doesn't really give us any details of the file format or the resolution. It just says 1080p via HDMI. Pitch format, JPEG, video output, HDMI. Uh, so I can't really see anything. But if we look at the details for the file that's recorded for that one, you can see that it is 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, on top of this, I mentioned at the beginning that my friend Lee brought the one of the upgraded models, and that is the AD407. That is £100 more than the one that I brought. So what do we get for our £100 more? So this one states 1080p, 60 frames per second, UV filter, 7-inch screen, adjustable stand. So if we look over the specs of this one, so we do have add-on filters for the lens which is good the stand has a tilt back so that you could view things at a slightly different angle it's good for a bit more depth so overall it's the bigger screen and 1080p 60 frames per second now i do have a file from lee and this one clearly says 1080p at 60 frames per second so not only is the picture bigger but the coat but the actual quality of the recording is better and this one has audio so if you're trying to sync up the video output from the scope with something that you're talking over you can use the audio in the video to sync the two together now let's have a look at the really cheap one my adsm 301 and then the upgraded one that lee's got and we're looking at the we're looking at a blue pill and i basically did the same motion and recorded it so this first one is the cheap device and much like we saw before the black areas that were very black they look very speckled and it's a bit washed out it doesn't look very clear now if we move over to my model the picture is very clean and sharp we've got nice colors and everything stands out we can see the text on the items on the chip on the other item, on the other devices and we have a really nice clean crisp picture so this is 1080p 30 frames per second so this is footage from lee's 1080p 60 frames per second it's not a fair comparison because the chip that he's got you can't really see it and that's not a fold of the microscope that's just what it looks like on his chip he does try to clean it up later on and you can barely see it but it's just not that clear but overall the pitch quality is just as good as mine and in fact it's a little bit smoother as we're scrolling around thanks to those extra 30 frames per second so i personally don't think for me the extra money is worth it now there's another thing to point out as well it says in the brochure that it's got that tilt back function but we can actually do that without the tilt without the fancy bracket because mine has the mount on the back to allow us to fit it to a microphone boom arm there's so one thing about these types of scopes the cheap one and this one and the bigger one depends on the size of the circuit board that you're working on so you can see on this one we can get it quite far underneath but um, it's not always nice to work on like if you're trying to desolder or reflow you've got to wedge it up with something so this model that I have the five inch actually has a mount on the back to fit it to uh, a tripod or a boom arm now after talking to lee again his doesn't have that so he had to make a 3d bracket to adapt it obviously taking it off the stand you're going to lose access to the flexible arms with the lights on there there is a bracket that you can 3d print but you do have to dismantle this take them out 
and solder up some way to connect these up when you mount it from the boom arm. So it depends if you're interested in doing that. All we have to do is undo the little nuts that are on the ring and we can pull that out. Now we can take our microphone boom arm and we can fit this on. It's a little bit tricky because it has to go on at an angle. So turn that around until it feels tight and then we can loosen this to straighten it up. We plug our USB back in. You can now see that I've got it on this boom arm. So I can move it out of the way when I'm not using it. And I can work on my boards underneath. It's not rattling around on the stand. There's nothing's in the way. It is a little bit trickier when you come to doing your height adjustment. It's not as nice as doing turning the wheel, but it works really well. But depending on where you put the arm, you're always going to be a, at a bit of an angle. You don't have access to the additional lamps, but you do have the light underneath. And you can see that we still get a very decent picture. And if we wanted to, we could just bring more lights in. I personally prefer it mounted on the boom arm so that it's always available. I don't have to bring it in and move it away off the desk. And I know that, that uh, Lee has got his mounted and he did 3D print the additional part to put the flexible arms on. So this is the stand that came with Lee's and you can see that it's got the pivot at the bottom to tilt it back. So he's mounted his boom arm on the wall. He's put it in a block so it's nice and solid. Here we can see the 3D printed bracket. I'll put a link in the description. His clamps around the, the lens tube. And then he's attached the flexible arms into the 3D printed part and moved the circuit board from inside his stand over to this. He's got the flexible arms and then he's got the added benefit of having it on the boom arm. So you can move it out the way and you can work on bigger things underneath the microscope, just like I can do with mine. So I might look at doing this myself because I do think having the flexible arms is definitely a good way to go. It, it does improve the picture quality and this keyboard that he's got here is pretty minging. I don't know what that is. I'd be wearing gloves. I hope he's at a tetanus shot. Maybe it's a new form of penicillin. Here we go. That is my quick look at the Andonstar ADSM 301 digital microscope. We compared it to my old DigiLife, which you can get now for around about £40. We quickly looked at the 7 inch upgraded model, and for me, I think the 5 inch is perfect. I wanted HDMI out so that if I wanted to do a stream, I wanted SD capture, and the rest of it was whatever I could afford. The reason that I went with this brand, the Andonstar brand, was after seeing other YouTubers use it. So Adrian Black and Stesfix, they both have Andon Star models. And looking at the quality of the recordings that they were sharing, I, I knew that I wanted one. So it was a matter of getting one that I could afford. So I look forward to using this in up and coming videos. So first, a big thank you to Lee over at Morphon Making It for helping me out with sending me footage of his model. Another thank you goes to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I'm working with them on a new project very soon. Keep a look out for that. And a big thank you to everybody that watches my videos. You're the reason that I carry on to do this. So I'll see you on the next one.